up YouTube? Yo gang, welcome back to the channel. Today we are cooking chicken tikka masala, butter chicken, whatever it is that you want to call it, but that is what we are having. Um, what you're gonna need for this recipe, you are going to need some skinless, boneless chicken thighs. Well, you can use any type, any part of the chicken that you please. To me, in my opinion, um, chicken breasts are a lot drier and um, the chicken thighs have a lot more flavor and they're not so dry. You're gonna need some garlic. You're gonna need some non-fat plain Greek yogurt, some butter, of course, an onion, some white salt, some heavy whipping cream. You're gonna need some crushed tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, whatever it is that you choose. Some extra virgin olive oil some gram masala, some chili powder, some coriander, some turmeric, and some cumin. Now I also have some fresh ginger that I am going to grate into that to make that beautiful base in this meal. Now we are pairing this butter chicken, chicken tikka masala with some naan. You can uh, buy this already pre-made from Publix. It's just as good. Um, in my opinion, uh, we're just not, we're working with some time here, so everybody ready to eat, so mom gotta cook. With that being said, let me wash my hands up so that we can get started. Okay, so let's get this chicken seasoned up. As you can see, it has been cleaned. I removed a lot of the excess fat that was on there and I cut it into small cubes. Let me let you see that so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just cut up into little pieces. Okay. Now we are going to go in with some salt. This is the marinate part. So what we're doing is we're gonna marinate this chicken uh, for uh, at least 30 minutes so that the flavors can, you know, incorporate themselves and be nice and tasty when you get ready to um, fry that chicken up. Then we're gonna go in with the gram masala. You wanna use about a teaspoon of that. We are gonna go in with some cumin. Now this smells international. The smells of these herbs and spices is incredible. Some cumin. We're gonna go in with some turmeric. Now the turmeric is what's gonna give it that pretty color. It's almost like curry, it stains. And we are gonna go in with some chili powder. Of course. This is also gonna give it a nice color as well. Okay, and to bind it all together, we are going to add some Greek yogurt. The yogurt is not only gonna help uh, tenderize the chicken some, but just, you know, give it that extra twine to it. Um, roughly, I would say a half to a half a cup to a cup, depending on how much chicken it is that you have. Okay, that would be just fine. Okay, now use something that you don't mind staining because these seasonings will stain your utensils. Nicely incorporated. Oh, I underestimated how many, uh, how much chicken I had. So that was six thighs. As you can see, I'm not satisfied with how that looks. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more seasoning to make sure that we have that covered. You're also going to make a sauce with the drippings off of this chicken 
once you fry that. Because uh, once this marinates, you are going to add it to some grease and fry that down and get the drippings off of this um, marinade and then go in with your onion and um, garlic and ginger and that good stuff. Okay, this looks good, looks better. Let's get that off of here. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside and we will come back when that is done. Well, I already cut up my onion. This is my garlic and my ginger. Don't worry about the size of the pieces in your sauce because you're gonna blend everything together um, before you actually you know, recombine your chicken with the sauce that you're gonna make. So don't worry about that. It's perfectly okay. Okay, we've added some grease to our frying pan and we are gonna fry the chicken that we had marinating. Just add that to the grease. Now don't worry about the drippings or the excess in the pan. The only thing I ask you not to do is overcrowd the, the frying pan and this is not working. I need to get it done. Do not overcrowd your frying pan because uh, chicken yields liquid and you do not want the chicken to um, yield, you know, it lift water <laughs> into the grease because you want to try to get a crisp or, you know, that brown char look to that chicken. So preventing overcrowding the pan will um, not cause that to happen. Okay, see that? That is what we are looking for. More so like this one. And we go with this hot grease. All right, this is what I mean when I say do not overcrowd the pan. You see how although there's quite a bit of chicken in here, nothing's really touching because I do not want it to yield too much liquid. And if you notice, the yogurt is not even coming off of the chicken. It's still intact or, you know, bleeding into the oil. All right, so you're gonna do this process until you have all your chicken browned. And then once your chicken is done, then we'll start on the sauce. Okay, so we are on our last batch of chicken. So we have a couple minutes to go. Now, um, you want to cook it mainly more towards the cook side than, you know, uh, medium cooked because we are going to add this back into a sauce once we get that sauce going. Uh, but the goal is to get that nice charred look on this chicken, as you can see like this. Ouch. Okay. In the same frying pan, you are going to add your onions. your ginger and your garlic. And we 
are going to sweat that down while we add our seasoning. The only thing that we're adding different, we're going to repeat the process with the seasonings that we did on our chicken for the marinade. Uh, the only thing different we're adding to this will be the coriander. All of those drippings down here at the bottom of this pan, you want that. Don't worry about it if it looks like it's burned. Just make sure you get those up. Okay, so we are going to add our half a stick of butter. Wouldn't be butter chicken if you don't add butter. We are going to add, again, some coriander. This is what we did not add the first go round. We're gonna add that turmeric. That cumin. And that gram masala. We're gonna incorporate this nicely. like so. Okay, now you could have used ghee. Ghee is a, um, uh, what do they call it? A clarified butter, um, but because I did not have ghee, I used the um, four tablespoons of butter with the oil that was already in the frying pan. So that pretty much kind of gave you the whole ghee. Okay, now to this, we are going to add, almost forgot my chili powder. Just a splash. All right, we are gonna add a can of crushed tomatoes. Now, um, the recipe calls for uh, cashews, raw cashews. I don't have any raw cashews, so I can't use it. It doesn't, uh, it wouldn't make or break it. I just don't want to insult anybody's culture by um, not adding the cashews or whatever. Um, so that is why I am telling you about those cashews now. Okay, get the rest of this out of here. Smells really nice. I'm also gonna add a quarter of a can of water to this. And I'm gonna let this cook down just a little bit before we add that to the blender as well as with our um, heavy cream. Okay. So I'm gonna turn this off for the moment and to my blender, preferably let it cool for a second. I am going to blend my mixture up. So I'm just going to add this garlic and the ginger If you are doing this, 
because it is hot. You need somewhere for the steam to escape when you start the process. put it into a strainer and into a fine strainer and then strain out the impurities or it's not even any impurities it's just um, the extra pieces of you know garlic and, and all that good stuff um, but uh, the goal is to get it as smooth as possible this is why I put it into the blender to make it very smooth Okay, so this is how this is looking and now we are going to add a cup of heavy cream. This is how we should be looking. Now had this been, I mean it is very, very silky, but had it been strained, you would not have seen any of the extra um, little pieces in here. But it looks so good. Okay, so now into this, we've already incorporated our heavy cream. And as you can see, it's nice and thick. What you are going to do now is you're going to reincorporate your chicken. down for a little while probably another 15 minutes on low heat and while we're doing that we'll give this a little bit of time and then we are going to put our nan in the oven and get ready to taste this excellent meal Paper so that I can put my nan in the oven for two minutes. Let me see. Yeah, two to three minutes. Now you can pair this with white rice, but I prefer it with the nan. Now I did tell you that when we were cooking the chicken the first go round, um, I cooked it about three quarters of the way 
um, because I did not want the chicken to get tough because I knew I had to reintroduce it to the heat. So the cooking process actually finished up in the sauce and um, while we wait for our nan, we'll be back and be ready to taste. Okay, our timer just went off and we are going to take our nan out of the oven. Okay, depending on how you like your nan um, is how long you would leave it in the oven. I like it light and soft. So. And you grab your piece of nan. just pair it with your dish like so. Mm. All right, let's taste. Let's see what we're working with here. So, this is a finger food situation, so you would tear off a piece of your nan and Dip it right in to your butter chicken. Mm. Very good. The spices are incredible. Mm. Wow, what a meal. Very nice. It's hot. Yoke Gang, thank you once again for joining me on another cooking episode with Yoke. Make sure you check out www.yokegang.com. Pick up a patch, pick up a t-shirt. T-shirts will be going live next week and I am so excited about it. Um, and with that being said, yo gang, y'all already know I love y'all for life and I love food, so peace.